Good morning. Welcome to Grace Lutheran Church. My name is David Edge. I'm your servant in Jesus Christ. I want to welcome you to our 1030 blended service. We're going to have parts of the historic liturgy as well as some newer songs kind of thrown into the mix. Today we're looking at Mark chapter 10 verse 26, which is where Jesus uh, tells someone that everyone would have viewed as righteous. You know, this guy is so wealthy and look how blessed by God he is. And isn't it just so obvious that this person can enter God's kingdom? And then Jesus shoots him down. And then the crowd is amazed and they say, well, if he can't get in, then who can? So that's what we're going to be asking. And that's the question we're going to be answering today. So why don't we rise and greet those around you? Then we'll begin with our opening song. I invite the congregation to remain standing as we'll sing our opening song together, Jesus Messiah.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son Jesus Christ to die for you, and it's for his sake that he forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, your divine wisdom sets in order all things in heaven and on earth. Put away from us all things hurtful and give us those things that are beneficial for us. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as we get to spend time in God's Word as we begin with our The Old Testament reading is from Ecclesiastes chapter 5. He who loves money will not be satisfied with money, nor he who loves wealth with his income. This also is vanity. When goods increase, they increase who eats them. And what advantage has their owner but to see them with his eyes? Sweet is the sleep of a laborer, whether he eats little or much but the full stomach of the rich will not let him sleep. There is a grievous evil that I have seen under the sun. Riches were kept by their owner to his hurt, and those riches were lost in a bad venture, and he is the father of a son, but he has nothing in his hand. As he came from his mother's womb, he shall go again, naked as he came, and shall take nothing for his toil that he may carry away in his hand. This also is a grievous evil. Just as he came, so shall he go. And what gain is there to him who toils for the wind? Moreover, all his days he eats in darkness in much vexation and sickness and anger. Behold, what I have seen to be good and fitting is to eat and drink and find enjoyment in all the toil with which one toils under the sun the few days of his life that God has given him, for this is his lot. Everyone also to whom God has given wealth and possessions and power to enjoy them and to accept his lot and rejoice in his toil, this is the gift of God. For he will not much remember the days of his life, because God keeps him occupied with joy in his heart. This is the word of the Lord. <clears throat> Our epistle is from Hebrews chapter 4, the first 13 verses. Therefore, while the promise of entering his rest still stands, let us fear lest any of you should seem to have failed to reach it. For good, <clears throat> excuse me, for good news came to us just as to them, but the message they heard did not benefit them, because they were not united by faith with those who listened. For we who have believed enter that rest, as he has said, As I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest, although his works were finished from the foundation of the world. 
for he has somewhere spoken of the seventh day in this way. And God rested on the seventh day from all his works. And again in this passage he said, They shall not enter my rest. Since therefore it remains for some to enter it, and those who formerly received the good news failed to enter because of disobedience, again he appoints a certain day. Today, saying through David so long afterwards in the words already quoted, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. For, for if Joshua had given them rest, God would not have spoken of another day later on. So then, there remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For whoever has entered God's rest has also rested from his works as God did from his. Let us therefore strive to enter that rest, so that no one may fall by the same sort of disobedience. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of the spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart, and no creature is hidden from his sight, but all are naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise out of respect for the words and ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How difficult it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were amazed at his words. But Jesus said to them again, Children, how difficult it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. And they were exceedingly astonished and said to him, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, With man it is impossible, but not with God, for all things are possible with God. Peter began to say to him, See, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or lands for my sake and for the gospel who will not receive a hundredfold now in this time. Houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and then the age to come eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess together the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son, begotten begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit, the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate, he suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven. He sits at the right hand of God, and he will come to, him to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified. He spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. 
Amen. You may be seated. At this time, we invite the children forward as Ms. Christie is going to lead us in the children's message. I think we're good now. Does that sound good? Better? Okay. Bagels. Bagels. No bagels today. Let's see. So, good morning. How are y'all? Tired. Tired. Okay. So, we're going to try something, okay? I want you guys to take in a big breath, a really big breath of air, and then we're going to, on the count of three, and then we're going to hold it. Okay? And let's see who holds it the longest. Okay, you ready? One, two, three. <gasps> Hold it in. Okay, now you're holding it in. Now I want you to take another deep breath. Can you? Could you do that? You could do it. <laughs> okay, so, okay, go back to breathing normal. Expel your breath. Okay. Good for you. It was hard though, right? Could you take a second breath when you had that first big breath in your mouth? Was it as easy as it could be? It was not easy for me to talk that way, right? So, <laughs> you were still holding your breath. So, but you couldn't get quite as much air as you did the first time, right? Because you still had breath in there. Okay, so that's the way the breathing works. You have to let something out in order for more to come in, right? Right, okay. So, but when you think about that, that's kind of scary. Because if you let all your air out before you let air come in, you don't have any, right? <sighs> yeah, kind of like that. Okay, so in today's Bible story, just before today's Bible story, we hear about a similar thing happening, okay? So there was a man who asked Jesus how he can be better, how he can better receive God's offering. And so Jesus tells the man that he has to let go of everything that he has. The one thing that he thinks he has to have, right? So, kind of like breathing, you know? But... For that man, it was really hard for him to let go of that thing. Do you know that thing was his wealth, all of his riches, all of his switches and video games. For, all of his no bridges. Fortnite. All of his stuff, bridges. including his bridges. Yes. Okay. So he had to let go of everything in order to get more, and he couldn't do it. He walked away. So he walked away from Jesus. So Jesus then tells the man, tells his disciples, the man and all of his disciples, that's a really hard thing to do. So the disciples asked him, he was like, so how can anyone do this? And Jesus says, for God, all things are possible. That's how he answered them. Okay. So and but what Jesus means by for God all things are possible is that we're not expected to do things on our own. Right? When you need help, do you ask Jesus for help? Not just when we're practicing self-control, right? Like we talked about during Sunday school. We're expected to ask God for help. He wants us to ask him for help. Not just with all the big things, but for the little things too. But in order to get God's help, in order to receive God's help, sometimes we have to let go of something else. And we have to let out that first breath so that we have room to take in a second breath, which is sometimes a little scary, right? So, which is why we're so thankful that we have these stories about Jesus tell us about his life and how we should go forward, right? And they show us what happens when we ask for God's help and make room in our lives to get that help. From God, right? So we see Jesus sharing God's healing and forgiveness and mercy and love with so many, many people, right? 
So, and when we ask for God's help and make room to receive that help, right, then we can do those same things that Jesus did and help others, right? Because all things are possible with God, right? Right. So, let's go ahead and pray, okay? Dear God, thank you for Jesus, for show, who shows us how to receive more of your gifts by sharing the gifts you've already given to us. Thank you for all of our blessings. Amen. Okay, now we do have treats here, someone's favorite Kit Kats. So you actually get to take two, but you have to share your blessings with somebody else, okay? Okay. I think he's in the nursery. Got it? Got it? <laughs> okay, you can have two. One for me, one for Sandy. I can share that. Watching the waves roll in As they reach the sand They just keep on coming in Non-stop day and night One right after the other With no end in sight Got me thinking about the way God's blessings abound You don't have to look far They just keep coming round Waves of grace crashing over me Washing away my sins Fulfilling all my needs Before one disappears The next one takes its place Waves of grace It doesn't matter if the tide is high Or when the tide is low God provides in perfect time Till our cups overflow Sometimes the waves are big And other times they're small Doesn't matter if your seas are calm Or even in a squall The waves they just continue To keep on rolling in because of that, I'll always give all my thanks to Him. Waves of grace crashing over me, washing away my sins, fulfilling all my needs before one disappears, the next one takes its place. Waves of grace. Again, be able to look at waves in the same way. 
Without thinking about how God shows His love to us every day. Waves of grace crashing over me, washing away my sins, fulfilling all my needs before one disappears, the next one takes its place. Waves of grace crashing over me, washing away my sins, fulfilling all my needs before one disappears. Next one takes its place. Waves of grace. Thank you. Thank you, Ken. Grace and mercy and peace to you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I think one of the hard things that uh, Christians face is when a pastor gets themselves involved in some kind of scandal, whether it's embezzlement that is stealing money, either from a nonprofit or from the church itself. Sometimes that there's other scandals that pastors or clergy can find themselves in. And this might be someone that you love. This might be someone that you even know. And you have a lot of admiration for either this celebrity pastor or maybe this happened to you. And there's a lot of emotions that can come uh, from this. But I think one of the things that, that people might say is, well, he was just a hypocrite. You know, he never really meant it. Maybe he just got out. Uh, to exploit people or to take advantage of their finances and so forth. But I think if we were honest, we would know that most people that find themselves uh, in situations like that uh, actually, I think, have good intentions, at least at the start, that they might have, uh, in their younger days, really loved God's Word and loved God a, a whole lot. And, and the more of the Bible that they read, the more they get excited and they become more involved in their, in their church. And then they go off to seminary or they go off to college. And, and then from there that they get to learn cool things like reading the Bible in Greek and Hebrew. And you just delve further and further into God's Word and you're just immersed in it. And, and prayer and the worship life of that community. And then these pastors, they get out into the church and they have nothing but a love for the people. And they just work day and night all for you. And yet, no matter how much they spend in prayer, and you look at them and, and you think, man, this is someone who spends all their time reading the Bible and theology and all this time in prayer. And yet, if they can stumble on this, then what are my odds? You know, isn't that something that's actually a very terrifying thought? That if someone who is so seemingly close to God can actually fall. And if someone who seems to be very pious and holy and moral and have all their act together, if that guy can't make it, what, what, is, what is my chance? What is, what is your chance in all this? In our gospel lesson today, we see that there's someone who comes and he's incredibly rich. And the thing about uh, wealth back in, in these days is that they were seen as someone who is favored by God. Maybe today we would look at someone who's rich and actually see a lot of immorality about it. You know, we say, well, how do they, how do they get their money? You know, are they some kind of like hedge fund person? Or are they part of those big corporations? Are they exploiting people? Do they have to... You know, I don't know, what, whatever words you can use, um, you know, to really denigrate rich people. But back then, uh, wealth often came really not necessarily by how smart of a business person you were, although, I mean, that was part of it. But in order to really be wealthy, like exorbitantly wealthy, it usually came from your family. And so if it came from your family, then it's basically luck. I mean, you know, that's kind of it, right? So if something is so based on luck 
then it was seen to have been something assigned to you by God. And so you can see how people in the time of Jesus, that they made a connection between how rich your family was to how close to God you were. That obviously, if you're incredibly rich, then that means that God favors you. Because again, it's not really about how good of a business person you are necessarily, but it was more so that you're born into a a kind of nobility or you're born into a kind of higher class. And so therefore, you're just kind of favored by God. So what happens is is that there's a guy who comes up and comes running up to Jesus, kneels before him and says, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And, And, you know, this guy has it, right? If anybody in the world can run up to Jesus and say, hey, I got my life together. He keeps all the commandments. Look how blessed by God he is. If anyone can enter God's kingdom, surely it's him, right? But actually, Jesus says, no, it's impossible for you to enter God's kingdom with whatever works you think. If you think that's what's going to get you in, then it's impossible. And this is the response to the crowd. And this is the question today. This is the question I want to raise. And this is the title of the sermon. So let's read our verse together. Then we'll pray and we'll unpack this. So let's read it together. And they were exceedingly astonished and said to him, then who can be saved? Let's pray. Lord, who among us can be saved? Who among us by our own works by our own deeds, by our own love, even for you. None of that is good enough, Lord. Only you can work faith in our hearts. So Lord, we ask that you can give us the kind of repentance that this rich person needed, but he chose not to have. Lord, turn our hearts not just away from our stuff, but really toward you, that we can receive you. Anyone here who's doubting, Lord, who's struggling to know uh, that, that you are here for them. Make that available. Give them access to you. Lord, open their hearts and pour yourself into each one of us. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, O Lord, our God. Amen. So um, I want to go back a few verses. We did not hear this earlier, but just to give you a, a context of what Jesus is talking about, because in our lectionary reading, Jesus talks about wealth and how hard it is for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. But I want to go back a a few verses, and so here's what we have. And as Jesus was setting out on his journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? So again, this is a guy, and we're going to see soon that he is a rich person, and so he comes up, and he asks this question, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments, do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not bear false witness, do not defraud, honor your father and mother. So this is the standard. You want to be saved? Here is God's standard. No one is good except for God alone. How does this guy view himself? He says, teacher, all these I have kept from my youth. And Jesus says, yeah, right. Uh, Well, he doesn't say that. He might have thought it, but he doesn't actually disagree. But I want to point out why this guy is wrong, because we have this, that um, Jesus would, would later say or says elsewhere that, Really, to not murder someone is based on hatred in the heart. In fact, if you have committed a hatred in your heart, which if you have siblings, then you have done that. Uh, you know that when, if you have a hatred in your heart, then you've already committed the act of murder. If you've had lust in your mind, then you've already committed the act of adultery and on and on. And so uh, Jesus doesn't even really have to argue with this guy because he, he gives him God's standards. But The guy knows that he's still missing something. And so even though he says, I kept all the commandments from my youth, rather than disagreeing, Jesus is going to expose uh, really his heart on this. And Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, you lack one thing, go, sell all that you have and give to the poor, 
Then you will have treasure in heaven, and come, follow me. Disheartened by the saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. So he lacks something. The thing he lacks is that he has too much stuff. Um, now, maybe I could, at, at this point, get more into the, the problems of, of wealth and the, the trappings of, of riches, which is certainly uh, something that, that we could do. But rather than just seeing it only as the sin of having uh, a love for possessions and stuff, which did uh, block him from getting into God's kingdom, that that I want to go further with Jesus on this. And so rather than making this all about riches, that we can um, well, just continue reading. And Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how difficult it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. The thing about wealth here, that it's seen as something that is really something preventing this guy from getting into God's kingdom here. But remember that they would have viewed someone who has wealth as being closer to God, as someone that God has certainly already favored. Certainly God has already given this guy so much stuff. I mean, otherwise, why would God not give him all this stuff if he didn't want him to have it? And so for Jesus, that he says it's the opposite. So we would think, or they would think back then, that because you got all this stuff, you must be closer to God and look at him. I mean, this was someone that you would not have wanted to be with you in Sunday school, right? They would have always shown you up. That not only does he have more stuff than you, but besides that, is that he keeps all these commandments. Look how good of a person he is. I mean, if, if, if not him, then who could possibly enter God's kingdom? And, and Jesus is going to take that paradigm that we have in our minds, and he's going to completely turn it upside down. And the disciples were amazed at Jesus' words, but Jesus said to them again, children, how difficult it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. Remember, a rich person, you can basically replace the word rich person with moral person, um, successful person, uh, let's say maybe even in a way godly, but, but maybe not in the way that you and I would think, so pious maybe, outwardly, they got all their life together, successful, rich, happy, mentally happy maybe, I don't know, whatever word, whatever idea you think that uh, you think would be someone who is close to God you know, hashtag blessed life. I don't know. I mean, I'm just thinking like what it is when you scroll through Facebook and you look at all the people who are happy, they're healthy, they're, they're good looking, right? Everything just seems to be going well for them, right? That's the image that we have that we can replace rich person with. So it's not only about riches, but it's our idea of who we think is closer to God by how blessed we look, by our outward appearances, by how moral we are, by how committed we are to God. And Jesus is totally going to blow all of that out of the water. And he says that, in fact, it's even harder for a rich person. And you can put moral, you can put good person, whatever you want in, in that place. It's harder for that rich person, that good person, to enter God's kingdom. It's, it'll be easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for this rich person to enter the kingdom of God. And they were exceedingly astonished and said to him, well, then who can be saved? So this is the question here. Who then can be saved? You take an eye of a needle, and I don't know about you, but I'm not much of a sower, but uh, sometimes if I ever have to put you know, a, a, a thread through the eye of a needle, I could barely get a small thread through that eye of a needle, you know? <laughs> I don't have the steadiest hands, but I, I can't even do that all the time, right? Talking about a really small hole, and we're talking about a camel, one of the largest animals. At least that would have been familiar in Jesus' day. So we're taking one of the smallest gaps and one of the largest animals. And if you think that that'll be impossible, well, I got to tell you, it'll be easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for what you consider to be a good person 
or someone close to God, it would be easier for that eye of a needle to have a camel go right through it than anybody based on our own works to enter God's kingdom. So no wonder the crowd is completely astonished by this, that they are beside themselves. And then they ask, well then, dang, if it's not that guy, the guy who's rich and moral, if it's not him, then what's, what, what, are, what are my odds? What is my luck in this? If he can't get in, well then, what does that say about you and me? And then Jesus looks at them and says, well, yeah, with man it is impossible, but not with God. For all things are possible with God. How cool is that? How great is that? Yeah, you're right. You think because you got more money that you're going to enter God's kingdom? You think because you can you know, do not only the Ten Commandments, but the Eleventh Commandment somehow or something? You think you got that one too? Whatever. You know, it doesn't really matter because according to God, that with man it is impossible, that there is no way that any one of us would be able to get into God's kingdom by our own force, by our own will, by our own good nature and, and efforts. And if this guy who seems to be kind of like the epitome of success and godliness, if that guy can't get in, then that means that you and me have no chances at all. But that's actually the gospel. We don't have the ability by ourselves to get into God's kingdom. There's only one way that we can get into God's kingdom. And that's not through our effort that we can get through uh, his gates into his kingdom. But instead that we have it the other way around. It's that God comes to us. We have the cross. We have the empty tomb. We have Jesus who kept all of God's law. If anybody could say that I've kept all these commandments since my youth. Well, this rich guy was lying. But um, he can't even give up a few possessions to follow Christ. But, but notice what Christ did, that, that Christ still loved him, and, and he loves you. He loves the crowd, and he loves you. That Christ died on the cross, and that he is the one who did this in your place. And the empty tomb, and you look at the empty tomb where um, something that was, that was sealed and, and guarded by Roman soldiers that we have Jesus, our Lord, who was placed in this tomb in the ground. And we say, well, it's impossible for anything else to happen, right? And you would also be right, that it would be impossible uh, for God to raise him from the dead. But with God, all things are possible, even him taking away our sins, even Jesus walking out of that tomb and showing that our sins indeed are forgiven. We think about the veil. You know, how is it that we can come to God? Well, you can't, but God comes to you. And so the veil in the temple was uh, a really thick curtain that this happened, that this was in the temple. And so what you have is that there's this huge curtain that was incredibly thick, and that if you could somehow get past it, but you didn't want to enter into God's holiness because God's presence, his holiness, will be something that only uh, the righteous can enter. But what did God do on the cross when the cross uh, was, was happening when Jesus was there, that that veil was, was torn into two. And so now we have the full access to God. It's not really so much about us coming to him, but he's the one who comes to us. Which is why then we can say in Hebrews chapter 4, uh, as we read earlier, it goes on to say this, that now we can approach the throne of grace with confidence. And why is it that we can approach the throne of grace with confidence? Because of what Jesus has done. I ask this question, who then could be saved? And the answer really is, with man it is impossible, but with God all things are possible. So we can know this, that who then can be saved by? Who then can be saved? Well, by Christ, you. You can be saved, you absolutely can. We need to have a humility, but we don't wanna make our humility a false humility, but we also don't wanna make humility a lack of confidence. We don't want to say, well, I can't be sure of my salvation because I don't want to be arrogant. You're not being arrogant. You are allowing yourself to, to recognize that this is all of God's grace and that this is what he has done and that I play no role in this and it's only by something that, that he has done for me. But we can have assurance in this because this is what happened, that the empty tomb is a reality and also that uh, Christ himself made these promises. So we can trust him at his word, which is finally we can have this confidence in God's work. We know this, that 
we can go to Christ, to his throne. We can approach his throne of grace with confidence. Yes, humility, but we can take a hold of it. We can have a real confidence in this because we know that Christ has done this for us. So who then can be saved? Well, I think that we can be saved, absolutely. But with God or with man, it is impossible. In fact, so impossible, it's absurd. That'll be easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle than any one of us to enter God's kingdom. But thanks be to God, we have Christ himself who has broke through that barrier, who has rescued us, who has brought us into his kingdom. And so now we can go to his throne of grace with confidence. Amen. And now the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep it guarding your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We'll go now to our offering. And so I invite the ushers forward. Uh, we use this as a time to give sacrificially to God. And we also use this as a time to prepare our hearts for the prayer of the church. So I invite the ushers forward. Let us pray for the whole church of God and for all people in Christ Jesus. Lord, you are near to the brokenhearted and you save the crushed in spirit. Deliver us from every fear and trouble that the praise of your name will continually be in our mouths. Lord, in your mercy. O God, with us salvation is impossible but with you all things are possible. Give boldness to your church to proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord, by whose death and resurrection the way to your kingdom has been opened. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, bless all who study at our universities and seminaries. Raise up more church workers, for the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, lead our households to find eternal rest in your Son and his word. Give fathers and mothers diligence in teaching their children and preserve us from all hardness of heart. Give us urgency to hear the good message of salvation today. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, guide our nation and its leaders in true wisdom to promote honest labor temporal protection, and fitting employment under the sun, guiding your Christians to serve Christ in their citizenship and callings. Do not let our hearts be occupied with the vanity of riches that perish, but with the true joy of Christ. Lord, in your mercy. When the righteous cry, you hear, O Lord, and deliver them out of all of their troubles. Be near to save the brokenhearted, the crushed in spirit, the sick, and those in need, especially for those we name silently in our hearts now. We 
We pray for James as he recovers from open heart surgery. For Ruth, who is having back issues. For the Parsons and the Gibby families, as they lost a sister-in-law's husband to diabetes on Tuesday at the age of 43. Lord, we ask that you can be near the brokenhearted for these families. You can increase their faith. Bring those that are hurting to healing and back to health. Lord, in your mercy, since we have a great high priest, Jesus Christ, hold us fast in our confession through all temptation and preserve us from sin, O Lord. Give your blessing to all who draw near to your throne of grace, especially for those who receive the blessed sacrament this day, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in our time of need. Lord, in your mercy. For these things and these other things that are on our hearts, Lord, we lift them all before you, and we pray this in the name of Jesus, and we pray as he has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread. And after he had given things, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also after supper, he took, he took the cup. And after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. You may be seated.
please rise. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you, body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Amen. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Please remain standing as we sing our closing song, which is, Lord, I need you. You may be seated. Have a few announcements for you. Church directory photos are happening now because we need to update them. Also, we're going to use this as a chance to update our church information. So uh, if you got a new cell phone number, if you got a new uh, MySpace account or something, you know, let us know because, you know, we need to update that about every decade or so. So we got some new photos coming uh, this Sunday as well as next Sunday. We'll have some more opportunities, but we're starting off with these two Sundays. 
uh, sign up for it so the way we can get you slotted in. Next one is Fall Fest. There is um, a handout in your bulletin on this, so we need some more people for the Crock-Pot cook-off. And so we have the Crock-Pot. Do you want to say any more on this, Christy? I tell you what, here, why don't I let the uh, coordinator uh, go ahead and say this. Oh, this microphone is dead. That is so sad that help. this mic, you can just, we got it. Yes. All right. You got it. Toasting, toasting. Yeah, there it is. here we go. Uh-huh. Yep. <laughs> All right, we're good. There you go. Okay. So, yes, this Saturday oh, no. is Fall Fest. So an opportunity for all of us to get together. We're also doing a crock pot cook-off. So there are four categories. We have chili, because, you know, it's fall. It's, it's a huge. main dish, a side dish, it's and a dessert. Best. So you are welcome to enter any of those categories or all of those categories, however you would like. And there is a $20 entry, free, entry fee per category. Then we will have tickets available so you can vote on those recipes. So there is a prize for the winner. There is also at the Fall Fest a cakewalk. So if you want to participate in the cakewalk, bring a baked good. It doesn't necessarily have to be your baked good in order to enter the cakewalk. But we'll also have a hayride. We will have s'mores and hot dogs and hamburgers. So just come out Saturday from four to six. We'll just have fun here raising this. Celebrate fall and just some time together with Jesus. Okay, thank you. I'll take that microphone, or here, here you go, you can hold this one. Hold on, Elaine, though. We got a couple more before you, though. All right, so, uh, new members, uh, welcome, uh, is uh, also coming, was that, is, is there one before that on the new members, welcome? Maybe not. Uh, well, new members, welcome is going to be next Saturday. Uh, after this service, we're going to have a potluck, so please bring um, a dish to share if you're able to. Have a note that there's a men's retreat that we have on November 8th and 9th. Um, we really encourage you to, to register for it. You can contact Lyndall Davis. Uh, his phone number is there in the bulletin. Uh, there's a $95 registration fee that'll help cover our cost. However, though, uh, Lyndall told me that if you're having uh, a hardship with the $95, if that's hard for you, then there are scholarships available. So. Uh, Please, if uh, the finances is the reason that you're unable to go, don't let it be. We can help cover some of your costs. Uh, but talk with Linda if you'd like to go. Uh, and then the last one that I have is Operation Christmas Child. And so, uh, Elaine, if you want to tell us about that, which, by the way, we have a very modest display uh, set up uh, by the front door uh, for the Operation Christmas Child. And uh, so tell us, tell us what's going on with that. Party on November 10, sorry, November 2nd at 10. Thank you. Uh, we have some other bullet, uh, announcements in the bullets in there for you. Um, oh, there's, a, there's a new member welcome. I just had it, it a little out of order, so that'll be next week. Um, and then uh, Bible and Brew is going to be on Tuesday at 6.30 over in Durant. Uh, is there anything else before we go? All right, well, go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.